Good morning. So today I wanted to talk to you about the water. This water, specifically. This large body of water, which as you may have noticed in recent videos, just kind of appeared. You might have seen us frolicking around in it, bathing in it. You might have seen it in the back of shots or heard this constant trickling in the background. Um, so I want to talk to you about where this water came from, how we manage our water um, off grid, what we're going to do with it and yeah, <laughs> show you all of that. You'll have to excuse the slightly dishevelled look today. <laughs> Our solar shower has broken in a storm. Um, bits fell off it and it's got a hole in it. And the new one has not arrived yet. So it's been a while since I've been able to wash my hair. <laughs> anyway. Whew. It's very cold this morning. The sun's out, but it was really frosty last night. I'm not wearing enough clothes at all. So this is where our water comes from. This is a natural spring and it's at the foot of our land. Our land starts maybe about 50 meters that way. And this is where we get our water from. This spring flows all year round. The water's free, it's drinkable. It's actually really good quality. People come from quite far away um, to fill up water cans to take home because they just like this water. And this is our source of water. It's our source of drinking water. We come down here and we fill up 20 liter containers for our drinking water fresh from the source. And it's also the source of our irrigation water, any other water uses that we have, you know, the shower, um, washing up, etc. The water gets channeled to our land, so I'll show you how that system works now. So at the end of this trough, there is a pipe that goes underground. There's usually a frog or two living in there. And it goes 50 or so metres in this direction underground until it comes out in our land. When we first got here a year or so ago, Tofu, come on, <whistles> come on this way. The pipe had been left kind of deliberately broken. It was like coming out of the ground and it was propped up on a log so that it was raised so that the water actually wasn't um, flowing this way. The water was overflowing from the trough back at the fountain and making that area all wet. Someone obviously didn't want the water like overflowing into the terrace, which is probably a good idea because apparently terraces can collapse if they get completely waterlogged and that is a lot of water just constantly flowing out of that pipe. So when we got here, everything was like, water wasn't coming this way at all. There were remnants of this um, nine centimetre diameter PVC pipe in various places along the whole stretch of about 250 metres all the way up to the house. But apart from being broken deliberately here at this point, um, which is still very close to the fountain, the pipe was just broken. It really wasn't, it wasn't in place at all. There were just fragments of it here and there, enough that we could tell that it was the original way that water had been moved from the fountain up to the house, um, but it, it wasn't working. <laughs> so this water has to travel about another 250 meters this way. Our land is like a long kind of triangle shape, so the water has to go <laughs> a quite a long way. Our land isn't very wide, but it does have to go a long way in that direction. And it's all been designed in the past so that the water travels on a very, very slight downward incline. And along that route, there are various um, deposits, aljibes, which are basically stone basins of various sizes located in different terraces. And they will collect water so that you've got like a source of water um, to irrigate from, basically, in the different areas of the land. So we've got four of those and the water passes along um, past each of these aljibes, filling them as it goes so that you've got this source of stored water to use when you need to. So one of the first things we decided to do when um, we moved here last year, early last summer, is fix this, this water pipe because we really needed water up at the house. Without this pipe there was no water there, which was really difficult. Um, but we didn't really know what we were doing, so we found a plumber who apparently specialised in aljibes and um, he came and looked at it for us and he suggested actually installing a different kind of pipe all the way from the fountain up to the house, um, a four centimetre diameter um, polyethylene pipe, which is more flexible um, 
and also more hard wearing so it would be more resistant to like the UV and the sun that we have here um, so he suggested installing that and not really knowing what we were doing we went along with that and that's what we did so in June he installed that and what he did was he put that pipe through the center of the nine centimeter PVC pipe which was already in place in some places so that it had like a channel to go through so he wasn't like digging up the ground and laying a new pipe in a new place so <laughs> that was all fine um, we got that in place and yeah we started using it we had the pipe um, we had the tap available up at the house so we could open the tap fill water bottles fill the bags that we use for showering um, stuff like that, fill our washing up water um, containers. So that seemed to be fine for a while while we were just doing those sorts of things. But then we encountered a problem. So the problem started when we tried to fill this deposit here, which is 45,000 litres. So we had this tap and we opened it and we waited. We were expecting the deposit to fill over the next few days, but it soon became apparent that that wasn't going to happen. So after about two hours, the water just turned to like a complete trickle. There was really nothing coming out of the pipe. And we kind of realized that the issue we had was that there had been like an accumulation of water in this black pipe um, while the tap had been closed. And as soon as we opened it, that accumulation flowed out fine. But after a while, there was just like not the continual pressure coming from the fountain to keep water moving through the pipe. The diameter we think is just too narrow, four centimeters provides too much resistance. And also with the not very big difference in, in kind of height from where the water comes from to where it had to end up, there just wasn't enough water pressure to keep that water flowing at a reasonable rate. So we actually found that the amount of water coming out of the pipe was just so small um, after a couple of hours that I think we were losing more water from evaporation than was actually <laughs> filling it up again from the pipe. So it was just an impossible task to fill this aljibe. So long story short, it was very disappointing. We were very upset. We'd spent a lot of time and money and energy putting this black pipe in only to realize it just wasn't gonna work for what we needed. So we spent then about six months kind of thinking about what to do next. And in the end, I decided to take a week off work in December and I decided to take out the black pipe, just do away with it completely and relay instead the missing kind of 250 meters or so of nine centimeter PVC pipe, which we think was how people were transporting this water before. So <laughs> that was a long week. It was really hard. I did actually have a lot of um, footage of that but I seem to have lost the hard drive where I was storing all of that so you'll just have to believe me it was a lot of work <laughs> it took me a whole week to take out this black pipe and relay this new one um, but that's what that's what we did um, we decided no more innovation let's just go with the way people seem to have done it in the past um, and it seems to be working great I've still got a few more bits to do and fix up on that whole um, system I ran out of new pipe in the end so I need to fix that up in the next few months there's this part here which is a bit <laughs> um, embarrassingly bad but it does still kind of work and this final section at the end um, is too bendy to put a PVC pipe in so this part is just an open canal which is more like the traditional way that water would have been channeled from one place to another before the era of PVC piping um, so this section is really nice. It's actually really nice to have open flowing water um, near the house. And actually in the morning when you come out, you often catch like loads of birds splashing around and having a bird bath in this water. So it's actually really, really nice. Since we've restored this like water system, we've seen like a huge increase in the amount of birds and things like dragonflies and damselflies flying around um, near the house. So it's really, really kind of changed the the ecosystem I guess a bit and it's just really nice to have this sound of flowing water constantly in the background it's just made such a difference to this area and I'm so glad that we were able to kind of restore it to how it was originally and use as much of the traditional kind of architecture that was already there so as you can see it is now full so that's great and so are the other deposits although we've chosen to leave one of them empty because we just don't need water in that area so water is flowing all through the system. Everything is working as I think it should. And now the question is really, 
Okay, how are we going to use this water? Now we've got between these four deposits, we've got 60,000 litres of water storage and that water kind of refreshes itself every about two weeks, I would say. It took about two weeks for this um, thing to fill up completely. And during that time, the other deposits were also like slowly filling. So I would say 60,000 litres every two, two, two and a half weeks is probably what we're dealing with. Yeah, <laughs> how are we going to use all that water? Obviously we take some of that water out as like washing up water, stuff like that. We get our drinking water straight from the fountain um, so it's really clean and it comes straight from the actual source. But for other things like uh, washing up, showering, stuff like that, we can take water out of here, that's fine. We really don't actually use that much water around the house at the moment because we don't have, you know, we don't have like taps that are connected to any kind of like tank or anything. We really just take water out, put it in a different kind of container and use it where we need it. So that's, that's, that's a minimal water, water usage, that's really nothing at all. The main question is what are we going to do with this large amount of water, which is really for irrigation, that's the main purpose of this water. So I wanted to do a small test of how the water flows out of the Aljibe, like a test of the flood irrigation method, which we are potentially going to be using to irrigate our fields, because I really don't know what the angle of the, of the field is. I don't know how the water is going to flow out. And I just, I feel like I need to see it and test it on a small area, see how much water is actually lost, see how it kind of works on a small patch of ground where I've got some stuff planted. So I'm preparing a small area that's going to be just a small bed right in front of the Aljibe. The water comes out just down there. So I'm really going to just do like maybe four square meters or something right in front of um, the Aljibe. So I've just um, given it a stream so that I can see the contours of the soil and see where the water kind of wants to flow. And then I'm going to, I suppose, dig some channels and build some beds on either side of the channels of where the water's going to go and yeah, I'll just see how it works, I guess. As you can see, our deposit is almost full. When it fills, which it will do very, very soon, we are so close, it's going to overflow down this channel here, which is currently slightly blocked, but that's no, no issue. I can just move this stone. It's gonna flow through this channel and it will be flowing into this basin at the bottom and the basin flows into long channels which go all along the edge of various fields that we've got and these channels have little doors which can be opened, well not that one, like this and thus allow the water to flow out and flood irrigate the fields. That's the traditional method of irrigation around here and I like it because there's no fossil fuels involved, it's just water and gravity and yeah, <laughs> stone and that's it. So I would really really like us to be able to use this method of irrigation if we can. The issue is just whether it uses too much water. Um, I think it should be fine because this is the system that was in place here, you know, before from decades and decades ago it's obviously worked so unless the flow of water that we're getting now is significantly less than it was in the past I think that should be fine. I'm not sure how to combine flood irrigation with mulching and that kind of um, soil care because obviously if you just flood a field anything that's like mulch on top is just gonna float away or maybe the water's not even going to be able to flow where it needs to go because you've got a layer of mulch in the way so I'm not sure how that's going to work that's another thing I want to test in this small little area I know there are people making that work. There are a few like videos on YouTube and people doing stuff like that, mostly with fruit trees. 
And the method that I've seen is that people put um, like chicken wire around the trunk of the fruit tree, put the mulch inside, and then the water can kind of pass through the chicken wire without the mulch escaping from around the base of the tree. So that seems like a really cool method. What I'm not sure how to do is do something like that with kind of rows of crops. And we really do want to you know, like be mulching and protecting the soil and doing no dig here because it gets so hot and dry in the summer. We really don't want that earth exposed and just like baking in the sun. So we really want to try and combine these two things, the traditional flood irrigation with uh, rows of no dig beds <laughs> with mulch. So that's the challenge that we have. And that's why I'm doing this small area first to see if I can make something like that work. We do also have a tap in this basin to open if we need to. And that's what I'm gonna do now because we haven't reached the point where the water is just overflowing into this basin. So I'm gonna open the tap and fill this small area. I've blocked it off here. Um, so I only want to fill this kind of half a square meter kind of area with water. And then I will open our little gate and try and flood a small vegetable patch here and see how that works. Oh, it's got quite a lot of pressure. Obviously, I mean, there's a lot of water in here. It just makes me so happy to see this water, just to have water. Like we're so, 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 so lucky to have this resource. It's not why, I mean, we wanted to do this anyway, but it's part of the reason why we feel like we just have like a responsibility to, to, to do a market garden here and to grow veg for the community and do something with this water because otherwise it's just a waste of such a precious resource that we're so, so lucky to have. Let's see where this water goes then. Well, the water didn't go very far. It mostly just stayed around the exit area. There's just not any channels for it to go down, I don't think. Um, I think what I'm gonna need to do is dig this area up and arrange the earth into sort of mounds so that the water will run along between them. So I'm gonna have a go at that.
Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> that's enough. That's really enough. Well, it's all going to come out anyway because it's not. Yeah. Yeah. I have no idea how often you would have to do this, how much water it's actually using, how far it would go along this field. Like, I don't know. Um, So in the end I did dig out a lot more of this area than just the initial test bed that I was going to do. I wanted to get all my seedlings in the ground so I dug out quite a few more channels in the end. I also extended some of the channels a bit further. I wanted to try and get them around all of the fruit trees because I thought that would be a good way to give these fruit trees, um, these tangerines, these oranges, um, a really good water. I think it's been a long time since they've had a really good water. And I was also mulching around these trees as well. Um, I planted some bulbs, some spring bulbs as well, around the base of a lot of these trees. And I put a layer of um, compost and wood chip down on top. So finally I was giving these trees a little bit of care. It's been a long time since they've been properly cared for. Tofu, out of the way. Come on, out of the way. So it's been a couple of weeks since I did this area and to tell you the truth the channels aren't really working that well mainly because of this main like stone canal behind me it's just so broken that the water is not filling to like the right level 
that it will actually flow out of all the little doors so although I can get the water out of one or two doors there's just I just can't it just won't flow out of the other ones because it doesn't reach the right level to flow out if that makes any sense so I've really only got one or two channels to work with and it's really hard to tell whether this could actually work on a big scale and I'm also having to water by hand the other plants that are growing along the channels which I can't um, irrigate with the floods method so I don't really feel like I've learned all that much just that um, that yeah I need to <laughs> repair this stone thing basically if it's gonna work I guess I've also learned that the the mulching method is also gonna be challenging because we've had a bit of wind and even with just a small amount of wind the mulch without anything to kind of keep it there is just blowing everywhere it's blowing into the channels themselves the channels are all full of straw um so keeping the channels clear will be a, an issue keeping the mulch in place would be an issue so i've definitely got some more thinking to do on this but at least i've got all my seedlings in the ground and at least i've expanded the garden area a little bit more toffee do you mind one final thing i did just want to try though is to use the pump and actually pump some water into some of these other channels which i can't fill from the the stone canal just to kind of see how that works, whether the water flows the right way, whether I've got the incline right and whether the shallow channels um, work a bit better. So I will try that, um, but yeah, overall I think I've got a lot more experimenting and learning to do. I'll keep you updated on um, what we try and do here and whether we get any of this mulch plus flood irrigation to work at any point. Um, but yeah, I think that's, I think that's it for now. Shop still for delicious. <laughs> 